I'm still in morning. I'm on East Coast time. So, uh, good morning. Uh, hopefully, I don't talk into the afternoon. Uh, but it is Friday, and I know you guys have been having an incredible week. Um, before I get started, um, wanted to drop in. It's the last day of the month. Uh, so appreciative for 1,500 of you guys here in the group uh, sharing, asking questions, giving perspective, giving things to think about, giving uh, more information of a different point of view to look at some potentially the same problem. So appreciative of that. Um, as I've been wrapping up a lot of my conversations with a lot of you all about kind of where you are in retirement, what does that look like? What do you have? Um, what should you be doing? And what? How does this affect what you're overall going to do? A few things speaking on that. When you think about what retirement looks like, you're basically saying, what do I want my life to look like at 60, 65, 70? What type of freedoms, what type of liberty financially do I want that to be? And if you can come up with a number based off your experience, is that 5000 a month if I don't have a house payment? Is that 6000 a month if I don't have a house payment? Is that 4000 a month? Whatever that particular cash flow amount is, that will allow you to kind of understand what do I need to be doing now to make sure that happens. Once you can check that box, now you start to turn your attention to from a financial end. Number one, if your retirement's on point, are you putting yourself in a position where you're going to have a paid for house as well? Check that box. After that, then you really want to heavily focus on, okay, I, my retirement's going to be straight. I got my house a little bit together. Knowing that I might be 32, 33, 34, that's another 30 years before I really get to see the benefits of my investing and what I've been learning and implementing via my investment plan. What can I do about now? And so that's where I want to kind of spend a little time together uh, speaking about the things that you really do need to be paying attention to right now. You, We are in a unique scenario. If you're in that millennial generation, you hear so much about you don't save enough. Hey, people are putting off having kids, getting married, um, doing things that are considered milestones in an adult's life. But I would also kind of help you understand or encourage you to look at things this way. Whether you're in retirement or whether you're just looking at your money right now, a big piece of your financial success is going to be the cash flow that you have. Meaning, how much income are you earning or can you, are you earning or can you potentially earn? And then, how can you earn income efficiently? Meaning, by now, if you're near, if you're my age, 35 plus, kind of near and closer to 40, your family's starting to get a little bit bigger. You have a wife. You, you have other considerations. Um, you have things you want to spend your time doing that doesn't involve or necessarily produce an income. You just want to spend time and enjoy yourself with family. Um, the idea when I, a quick side note, when I was talking to my wife probably about a week ago, uh, one of the things that I never really thought about was, hey, you have this kid, but then you got to go to work every day. I never thought about the idea of, hey, I have this baby, I have this newborn, and I've been with her every single day. Uh, and it's a joy and it's a privilege, but there's also, when you think about the long-term effects of what that can do for a child, you're injecting into them the values and the morals and the way you want them to live the more time you're able to be around them. That's why that time is so coveted uh, for most people. And then from a financial end, yeah, if I don't have to utilize daycare or child care services to that degree, well, that just helps eliminate a potential expense. But the biggest thing is how do you want to spend your time, not only in your older years retirement, but how do you want to spend your time right now? And that's where I want you to really be focused on because you are in a unique scenario right now with the economy. So a couple of days ago, Fed came out. They're not anticipating raising any mortgage rates until 2023. The inflation might tip up this year, meaning the overall cost of gasoline, cereal, diapers, all the things that you normally pay for. But 
the idea is they're looking to try to manage and keep inflation about a 2% rate on average. And so that means, yeah, some days some years is going to be higher, some years is going to be lower. From an income perspective, if you're again, if you're still doing 3, 3.5% at your job, while that can be considered healthy if the economy or they're allowing inflation to grow at a 2% rate, what if you're in that year that inflation just tips over and is at four and a half or five percent or whatever? That's gonna make a little different, tighter squeeze on that budget for those things that you normally do. So th this is what I want to encourage you to do. Yes, I do. I'm still doing those conversations. Have a few set up today. Look at your retirement. The whole point of that thing is to give you peace of mind, give you confidence of. Where are you at? What do you have? Are you on the right track? Are you fine? But that's 20, 30 years from now. Then after we discuss that, all right, what can I do now? Again, it's still a great time to refinance your home. And as you start to look at decreasing the rate, look at how you can decrease the term. All that's going to do is even if you're not going to be at that home forever, you need to be looking at how you can put yourself in a position to make better decisions now to make so that later on next house it's an easier decision meaning you have more money in that equation once you sell the house or uh, if you're moving more money to that next house or however you decide or maybe you want to keep the house you like the house uh, you want it to be a rental you put yourself in a position to where it's going to fully cash flow a lot quicker just off these small decisions and this current environment so that's the next thing I want you to think about after you kind of look at, okay, this is kind of what my, I want my life to look like. Then this is um, the opportunity I have. Well, Jonathan, I've, I've already refinanced my home. My, my retirement is not necessarily all the way on track, but I got a plan to get myself there. Okay, cool. So then I want you to look at, okay, what is unhappy about your financial life? And usually your financial life in the present is going to typically draw down to not having enough margin or freedom to do certain things that you would like to do. Maybe uh, you say, hey, I want to vacation once or twice a year, however that looks for you. I want you to have the option to do it whenever you feel like it and money doesn't have, uh, have to be a burden. But something of that is some something I want you to think about when your current cash flow is how can you be most efficient with your dollar? So a good thing is refinancing your home, shorter term, lower rate, even depending on where you're coming from, lower payment in that in all three could be true. The next thing is, all right, what are things that could be taken away at my budget? Do I have credit card bills? Do I have a car loan? Do um, a lot of people have student loans? But if I can get rid of the credit card bills and the car loan, what can I do to get rid of those? And how fast can I reasonably get rid of them? One thing I want you to think about with with this scenario is do only pay extra on one debt at a time. Do not pay extra on multiple because you will essentially be throwing your money away. And you need to make sure every dollar is maximized to its full potential to give you, again, with the goal of giving you more margin in your life. The next thing, while you're doing that and looking for ways that you can be more efficient, what can you do to earn more income? It's never been a better time, again, with the economy where it's at. While it's still on the rise, it's an awesome time to switch jobs. It's an awesome time to get more income. It's an awesome time to maximize your potential before the competition rises in the job market sector. Construction, industrial, a lot of these pieces of business have exploded and you can be a part of that explosion and take, take your skills and maximize a new income level in that process. So if you're growing your income and you're decreasing your expenses, that means what you can live on in the lifestyle and lifestyle can expand. Or if you want to save more, or if you want to kind of have a little bit more cash on hand, whatever that case may be. The next thing is I, I want you to really reconsider the car and reevaluate your car. So think 
think about how much it is. I, I use myself as an example. When I first started at Bank of America um, nearly nine years ago now, uh, probably about a year into my time there, I was making, uh, started off making about 29000 a year. I went up to about forty, uh, And the... About a year in, I had an accident on my car, and uh, I had to buy a new car. I didn't have to. It was suggested by my mom to get a new car. And I bought a car that was over half the income that I was bringing in. Now, my in, my particular scenario was, uh, number one, I had a roommate, so my bills were extremely low. Uh, the second thing is, I didn't know at that time, but over those next three years, my income would nearly triple. Uh, over those next one to three years. Uh, I believe it was in the next year and a half that uh, it tripled. But you can't make decisions with that hope. Oftentimes, it goes the other way, to be honest. it's You buy, a, buy an expensive, uh, make an expensive purchase like that, and then you might lose income or something may happen to where you're just stagnant and you can't seem to grow. And so you're, you're really tight. And the point that most people are struggling with through the pandemic, and that's a lot of what the pandemic showed. It showed your gaps in your budget, how you were unprepared, and it puts the pressure on what you're trying to do. And that's why I want you to clean up your budget, clean up your expenses as much as possible, and stay on top of it. It's not something that will you can ever just kind of set it forget it because these expenses, they find new ways of charging you money, so you have to stay on them. Phone carriers, they find new ways of charging you money. Insurance carrier rates change all the time. Um, uh, not a, an electric, but um, there was another carrier. Oh, internet, cable, all those people, they find new ways of charging you more money, and so you have to always keep a constant watch eye on these expenses to keep that in check. And you always have to have a progressive plan that's going to allow you to build money. Because the more money you have in the meantime, your retirement can be on point, but your present life could suck. It could not be fun. It could be constricting. And so often that can be, it's just not a healthy way to live because you're like, well, dad, I got something to look forward to in the future. And that's great. But what about right now? Do you want, I, again, one of the things that got me into really thinking about my money in present day was, yeah, I, I sat down with a lot of millionaires, 64, 65, 66, and they would sit back and say, hey, man, now we can travel. You're not going to travel the same way at 65 as you did when you were 35 or 32. <laughs> Oh man, now I'm gonna go buy this house, or now I'm gonna go get this car, or uh, now I'm gonna just go spend money idly, or happy hours, or whatever you're thinking about doing. It's not going to be the same experience because you're at a different stage of life. Your body is different, your mind is different, all these different things. So that's why I want you to really tune in. Number one, it is totally possible for you to live your best life. You have to decide what your best life is. As far as me, my job is to give you all the tools, all the resources, all the information, and help direct you to make your money fit and match the dream of what you want your present and future lifestyle to be. That, oh, you can, you can have the life you want. You can have a life that you never even dreamed of. It is going to take work. It is going to take effort. And it's you have to decide, do I want to put in that much effort? I, or you could be, there are a lot of people retire multimillionaires. There are a lot of people who retire, have a good retirement. They got two, 200 grand in uh, assets and they got a cash flow of about $4,000 a month. And they are extremely comfortable and happy. You have to decide what's going to be best for you. That's why personal finance is so personal. My biggest thing is what once you can get your retirement on path, if you want to build wealth, it's going to take some work. 
and you you are going to have to start being a little bit more conservative in what you're doing and the reason why i say that is that's the part where myself and i've struggled that's the part where many of my friends struggle and people struggle but the fact is when you've already dug a ditch for yourself if you are overweight you you can't just increase how much you work out you have to decrease and you have to change your intake you have to change how you're eating and what you're doing so the same thing is with your money you it's very it, it really is helpful if you can increase your income I'm not gonna dispute that but it's not gonna do you any good to increase your income and your expenses and your spending is out of control the way you make decisions is not strategic you're not looking at the realistic point of view and you don't and you make a decision without having all the information of how it works there's no point at which you should not understand what you're totally paying when you get any type of loan that you're borrowing for there's no point in let's see you're trying to play the credit card game and I don't get me wrong I use a credit card I use it once a month but you're doing all these things to try to make your score a certain thing a certain increase that's those strategies and stuff it's cool but to be honest I use my credit card pay it off within a couple of days still got 800 and I've done that consistently over time but part of what's again going into your credit score I got rid of the fluff got rid of car notes got rid of credit card debt got rid of the other things have the mortgage the mortgage is now lower because there are a lot of other factors that people don't necessarily think about when you're talking about your credit your credit also looks at your income your credit also looks at your loan over time meaning how much did your loan balance start at how much time has surpassed where are you now so when you move from a 30 to a 15 year or 30 to a 20 year and you only spent maybe four or five years in it that will reflect positively and a lot stronger silently on your credit report because that they, they can recognize the system recognizes that change has occurred that doesn't require you to pay for something and always carry about one percent of the balance um month over month what good does that do who how is that helping you you're probably paying more money for that little bit come on guys let's get serious about what's going on right now and right now it's more important for you to have that margin because of again the covid scenario do you want to be caught off guard yeah maybe three months of cash isn't um enough maybe you're realizing that now hey i need more cash whatever the case may be you can make the present better but it is going to take a little bit of you being conservative strategic and you have to follow through you have to have to follow through if you don't act you can make a plan but if you don't act it's a waste of time and you're not you're going to be right back where you were so all these things to say is yeah I'm still doing it and I'll always put myself as a resource whatever I can do to meet you where you are that's what this group's about that's what um, money conversation is about and that's a, what about taking your life to the next level but I do want you to understand that if you can know what you need to do if you can really assess a problem it's a lot easier to digest based off where you are and to make reasonable actionable steps to move forward I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like it, go ahead and give a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please make sure you follow me on IG, J. Thomas Solutions, and subscribe to the YouTube page. Videos come out about three times a week there. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.